the gene splicing patent, U.S. Patent No. 4, 237, 224, issued to Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyer in 1980. Welcome to Patentomatics. In today's video, we will talk about the gene splicing patent, U.S. Patent No. 4, 237, 224, issued to Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyer in 1980. So before this video starts, please share, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates. The process by which genetic material from one organism is artificially introduced into the genome of another organism, and then replicated and expressed by that other organism, was largely invented as a result of the work done by Herbert W. Boyer, Stanley N. Cohen, and Paul Berg, although a great number of other scientists also made significant contributions to the development of the new technology. The work that Boyer has done with bacterial RDNA. After Paul Berg's landmark experiment in gene splicing in 1971, the next significant step in the development of modern biotechnology was the insertion of RDNA into bacteria in such a way that the foreign DNA would replicate naturally. This achievement is considered to be modern biotechnology's first landmark, see figure. Boyer, who was born in 1936, accomplished this step in 1972 at the University of California, San Francisco, UCSF, working in conjunction with Cohen, who was born in 1935 at Stanford University. Boyer was born and reared in western Pennsylvania, and he went to St. Vincent's College in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, for his undergraduate education where he majored in pre-medical studies. But, he quickly became interested in research and ultimately decided to specialize in both chemistry and biology. After receiving his doctorate in biochemistry from the University of Pittsburgh, he pursued additional education by accepting a postdoctoral fellowship at Yale University. In 1966, he decided to accept a position at the University of California, San Francisco, UCSF which was rapidly becoming a center of excellence in the many fields that contributed to the burgeoning science of biotechnology. Researchers, including Boyer, realized in 1972 that the enzyme ECORI, which had been discovered in Boyer's lab at UCSF, cut DNA in such a way that the ends were not blunt but staggered. This meant that there was no need for any molecular additions to be made for one severed piece to latch onto another severed piece that possessed complementary cuts. This was a significant discovery. Boyer and a colleague named Robert Helling started their endeavor to manufacture RDNA to insert in the bacteria Escherichia coli by attempting to use ECORI to open up the DNA of the bacterial virus Lambda. Their ultimate goal was to implant the RDNA into the bacteria that make up Escherichia coli. But, they were left perplexed when the enzyme sliced the DNA in five different places rather than just one, as had been planned a collaborative effort by Boyer and Cohen. In November of 1972, both Boyer and Cohen were in Hawaii, where they presented papers on plasmids at a meeting that was co-hosted by the United States and Japan. DNA that is physically distinct from the chromosomal DNA of a bacterium and can multiply without assistance from the chromosomal DNA is known as a plasmid. Plasmids are found almost exclusively in bacteria, Cohen was reporting on a procedure that was recently discovered in his laboratory that enabled bacteria to take up plasmid DNA and produce offspring that contain self-replicating plasmids identical to the original implant. These offspring are referred to as clones. This discovery took place at the same time that Boyer was describing his data showing the nature of the DNA ends generated by ECORI cleavage. The two men decided to work together on a project to identify what genes are present in plasmids and how they are ordered. They made their plans for the project while eating sandwiches late one night during the conference. Cohen, who was born and raised in Perth Amboy, New Jersey, attended Rutgers University for his undergraduate studies before transferring to the University of Pennsylvania for his medical degree. After graduating from medical school, he began a career in medical research and teaching at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York now, he is a full professor there. There, he focused his research on the intricate systems that are responsible for controlling gene expression in the bacterial virus Lambda. 
1968 was the year when he started working at the Stanford University School of Medicine after accepting a position there. The relationship between Boyer and Cohen and their work together was quite close. Plasmids that were obtained at Stanford were sent to the laboratory of Boyer, in San Francisco so that EcoRI could cut them and the DNA fragments could be analyzed. They were then brought back to Stanford, where they were merged, and included into E. coli, where they were able to proliferate. The brand, new recombinant plasmids were then extracted and examined in each laboratory. Cloning between different species. The first success of the Boyer. Cohen partnership happened in the spring of 1973, and utilized one of Cohen's plasmids called PSC-101. Boyer and Cohen worked together on this project. It was already known that plasmids could transfer drug resistance across bacteria, and this one could make E. coli E. coli. coli that is immune to the treatment provided by the antibiotic tetracycline. EcoRI was only successful in cleaving the plasmid PSC-101 in one location, hence the plasmid's ability to replicate was not affected in any way. When the DNA that had been linearized by the PSC-101 enzyme and other DNA that had been cleaved by the same enzyme was mixed, the complementary ends of fragments from both sources of DNA came together to form new loops. The treatment with another enzyme was able to close the nicks that were still evident in the DNA loops and these DNA loops were then injected into bacteria that had been treated with calcium chloride. The bacteria were distributed across a culture that contained tetracycline, and the only bacteria that survived were the ones that had the RDNA plasmids. Soon after, Boyer and Cohen went on to cloning experiments that were significantly more difficult. They linked plasmids that were resistant to tetracycline with plasmids that were resistant to canamycin, which is another antibiotic and they introduced them into E. coli. coli. Next, they demonstrated that genetic material could be transferred between species, so debunking a theory that had been prevalent for a very long time. They cut off a portion of the plasmid that is found in Staphylococcus, which is the bacteria that is responsible for staph infections, and then they spliced it with one of the several E. coli plasmids. coli plasmids, and then implanted the entire thing in E. coli. Coli. E. Coli was able to successfully propagate the DNA from Staphylococcus, which is a different species of bacteria. Coli. An even more significant achievement in the field of interspecies cloning was the successful insertion of E. Coli using genes extracted from a species of clawed frog native to South Africa. The beginnings of the biotechnology industry. Notwithstanding the continued debate around the technology and the public sphere of cloning, commercial initiatives were rapidly formed to capitalize on Boyer and Cohen's new RDNA technology as quickly as possible. Genentech, which Boyer and a young venture entrepreneur named Robert Swanson established in 1976, was at the forefront of this movement. Soon after beginning their work with cloning experiments, Boyer and Cohen, along with other researchers, realized that it might be possible to use bacteria, into which human genetic information had been inserted to simulate the body's natural defense mechanisms against illness and to treat birth defects. In the fall of 1977, researchers Boyer at UCSF and Keiichi Itakura at the City of Hope Medical Center in Duarte, California, were successful in expressing a mammalian protein in bacteria. This protein was somatostatin. Genentech did not yet have its facilities at the time. The human brain is responsible for the production of this hormone, which plays a significant part in the regulation of the growth hormone. It has been demonstrated that recombinant somatostatin is nearly indistinguishable from the molecule that occurs naturally. In addition to other initiatives, recombinant insulin, a plasmid that coded for human insulin was also produced by Boyer and Itakura in 1978. By that time, they faced competition from a vast number of companies, some of which were newer, smaller pharmaceutical companies. In the instance of recombinant insulin, Eli Lilly and company entered into a partnership with Genentech to develop the manufacturing technique for Humulin. This partnership was known as a joint venture the Food and Drug Administration gave its blessing to Humulin in 1982, making it the first biotechnology product to be commercially available. Cohen continued to work as a researcher at an academic institution, concentrating on fundamental topics relating to genetics and biology, 
whilst Boyer became deeply immersed in commercial activity. Cohen, on the other hand, has worked as a consultant for several different biotechnology companies throughout the years. In the year 2000, the Chemical Heritage Foundation, which is now known as the Science History Institute, and the Biotechnology Innovation Organization bestowed upon Boyer their respective awards for biotechnology heritage. This prize was given in recognition of Boyer's illustrious academic career, his creation of the RDNA technology, his vision as a co-founder of Genentech, and his involvement in the development of biotechnology, which has given new hope to millions of people all over the world. Cohen was presented with the 2016 Biotechnology Heritage Award in recognition of his ground breaking work in the creation of RDNA plasmids, which is considered to be the basis of all biotechnology. In addition, Boyer was honored with the Winthrop Sears Medal in 2005 and the Perkin Medal awarded by the Society of Chemical Industry in 2007. In a series of experiments that took place between 1972 and 1974, Stanley Cohen, Herbert Boyer, and their colleagues at Stanford University and the University of California San Francisco built on the work that had been done by recombinant DNA pioneers, such as Paul Berg to develop techniques that would form the basis of recombinant DNA technology. These techniques were the foundation of the field. These experiments were a significant driving force behind the development of the biotechnology sector. Since 1959, researchers have known that in addition to their chromosomes, bacteria also have what is referred to as plasmids which are loops of DNA. In their natural environments, bacteria can trade plasmids with one another, allowing for the rapid transmission of useful genes such as those that code for resistance to antibiotics. At the beginning of the 1970s, researchers had already extracted several different plasmids, as well as unique enzymes that are referred to as restriction endonucleases. These enzymes function similarly to scissors in that they cut open the loops of plasmids, after meeting each other at a conference in 1972, Herbert Boyer, an expert in restriction endonucleases, and Stanley Cohen, an expert in plasmids, concluded that it would be beneficial to integrate their respective areas of research. After some preliminary work in 1973, the team led by Cohen and Boyer was successful in opening a plasmid loop that came from one species of bacteria, inserting a gene that came from a different species of bacteria and then closing the plasmid. This resulted in the formation of a recombinant DNA molecule, which is a plasmid that contains DNA that has been recombined from two separate sources. After that, they showed that bacteria were able to make use of the recombinant DNA by inserting the plasmid into bacteria and demonstrating the process. The group was responsible for the creation of the very first genetically engineered organisms. How did you like the video? Do you like it? Leave your valuable comments in the comment section below, and don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel Potentomatics on YouTube.